smoke. Number five, Dabatul Ard. Allah is speaking about Ard here. The Prophet والسلام, is speaking about Ard in the context of the last age, the signs of Qiyamah. And nine times out of ten, when the word Ard is used in connection with the last age, it refers to Al Ardul Muqaddasa. And so Dabbatul Ard is Dabbatul Ardul Muqaddasa. Hmm? Dabbatul Ardul Muqaddasa. A beast will emerge out of the Holy Land. It is plain for everybody to see except George Bush. Where, who is that beast which has emerged out of the Holy Land and is behaving like a wild beast to such an extent that even Jewish intellectuals now, even Jewish intellectuals in Israel are now denouncing it and are warning the world of a tremendous catastrophe which is about to occur. I'm not the only one talking about it. Jewish intellectuals in the state of Israel are denouncing this beast, the state of Israel, in the hands of those who now want it to become the ruling state in the world. As soon as the body of Iran was discovered, the countdown has begun. When I was here last December, I said that September the 11th represents the opening rounds of what will eventually result in the state of Israel replacing the United States of America as the ruling state in the world. When Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, it is then that oppression will truly begin, particularly if you're an Arab, particularly if you're an Arab. Yes, it is then that oppression will really begin. To use an African-American expression, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. If there are those who are coming to you and saying to you that the sunshine is about to come, the dark night is about to end, and Islam is going to become triumphant in the world tomorrow, they're misguiding you. No. The darkest part of the night still lies ahead. And I have come to give this message to you. How do you survive? Allahu A'lam about their intentions and what they do. But I ask you, and I always ask rich, intelligent, intellectual people who talk about Palestine, I asked them, if someone came inside your home, you came home and you found someone in your home, and they, you asked them why you're here, you said, because in a scripture that God gave to me, he said that this house here belonged to me. You would say, no, get out of my house. So they killed your father. They kill your brother, they kill your uncle, they kill everybody except the children. And they stay in that house. And those children they did not kill, even though they cannot get back in the house again. Every time those children pass by that house, they pick up a stone and they throw it at that house. And those people in the house, they shoot at those children. I would ask you, are those children criminals? If they came, if those children if that's all they could do was throw a rock at those people that took your house, would those children be criminals? The person said, no, that's a very pathetic situation. I said, that is the condition of Palestine. There's nothing but children throwing stones, facing tanks. But that's all they can do. And I say, that if Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, only gives to the children of Palestine, rocks to throw, and the heart to face tanks. They must face the tanks, and they must continue to throw stones. Because that is an act of honor. And if the men, if there are no more men to throw stones, to carry the honor of those people, 
then the children, they must continue to throw stones until there is no one else to throw a stone.